Get ready, boys and girls. It is the Friday Nightcap. And joining me this week, you are in for a treat. My dear friend John Allen, senior national politics reporter for NBC News. Molly Jong Fast, special correspondent for Vanity Fair. Nancy Giles is back with us. She's a Nightcap alumni, CBS Sunday morning contributor, and comedian John Fuselang. John, this is your first visit to us. I'm glad you're here. You know what we're going to talk about. This week... Fox News settled with Dominion. Moments before the defamation trial was about to start, Fox agreed to pay $787.5 million. Right. We don't need to get into that. What I want to talk about is what this settlement means for the future of misinformation. John, Dominion's not done. They're done with Fox, but they are going after Sidney Powell, Mike Lindell, Rudy Giuliani. The fact that individuals who are big pushers of misinformation and conspiracy theories could be opening up their own pockets and having to pay out big settlements, do you think that could impact the whole misinformation landscape? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, this is not a small amount of money that Fox paid for, for you know, to start with. That hurts. $700, $800 million hurts. But then you look at all these other cases, the people you just mentioned, there are going to be depositions from them that are going to show up in court filings. You're going to see uh, some of them potentially even go to court. And this will create a disincentive, I think, for a lot of people to be the ones that are out there making false claims in the future about such high-profile things, right? We're talking about a presidential election. We're talking about uh, individuals, electors, uh, and you're talking about uh, election workers um, who are arguing that they've been defamed. So I think there's going to be a huge disincentive for people to do this again. Are you worried it's too late, though? Think about the other news this week. All of these shootings, right? People just making everyday mistakes, getting shot. Oh. And the thread that we keep hearing is some of these shooters are, 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 are lock, stock, and battle tied in right. to grievance media, right? right. The grandson it's uh, of Ralph Yarl Shooter did this really difficult interview on CNN and said my grandfather sat there in his Lazy Boy watching watching right-wing media all day, all night, and ended up paranoid and crazy. It's not right what they're doing. And see, I want to live in a world where not only would Fox have to pay all that money, but that they would have to say, we lied. That's the world I want to live but in. But what was that going to get you? Right. It, satisfaction, mental satisfaction, well, but I think. Don't we say, right, companies all the time, when they screw up, they say sorry, and we go, those are just words. But we you want know you to pay. I want paid. them to say they were sorry and that they lied on camera. I want it to come yeah. out of Tucker Carlson's mouth. I want it to come out of Laura mm. Ingraham's <laughs> mouth. I, that's the world say I want to live in, John. Say it slower, Say it slower. Oh, my God, it's so hot. It's so hot when you talk this way. Yeah, you know, Fox actually has done pretty well. Uh, they did more than any other media entity to lie us into a war with Iraq that killed 4,486 soldiers. They spread racist lies that the first black president wasn't oh, really yeah. one of us, lied about Obamacare every way you can imagine, lied about Benghazi, Hillary's emails. So uh, their batting average is pretty good. They got caught one time. And so I, we have to remember, yes, there are more suits coming, smart Maddox waiting in the wings, right. but I'm not expecting a sudden outburst of consistent honesty from Hannity and company anytime soon. Well, and I would say, I, I mean, this is not their first payoff, right? Fox News, not I mean, and Seth Rich. I mean, I think the hope was that a lot of us had was that they would permeate the Fox News bubble and you would have a Tucker Carlson saying, look, we know what's true and we might not have been saying it. But if you look historically, Fox has never done that. And in fact, you saw how it Kurtz on the show, unable to confirm the number of the settlement. So it is an interesting... News of the World did it. I mean, he had to shatter News of the World, Rupert did. But, I mean, it was millions and millions for Ailes and for O'Reilly as oh, well. Oh, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. right. And how before. interesting, by the way, that it's the women that seem to bring Fox, uh, you know, down all the time. And, and one, one of my uh, heroes this week, my MVP, was Abby Grossberg. Because it felt like her, uh, her information, her receipts, her recordings, and what the... The Fox lawyers did not hand over to the Dominion lawyers really kick things into high gear. And I just love that it's a woman, again. Mm. But it's not over no. for Fox. You no. just said it, Smartmatic, these other no. lawsuits, right? Dominion could be, they, their hand could be done, but this game is not done. Correct. Do you think that with the next presidential election in 2024 possibly looking like a redo of 2020, Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, could right-wing media be doubling down yes. on grievance media? You don't think there's any yes. chance they're going to pull back following this? Learn from their lessons and abandon <laughs> the business model? No, I don't see that happening. The Republican Party's problem is they keep running for the Republican Party nomination. They keep playing to the choir that's already on their side, and they keep forgetting about all those other voters that aren't there and all the young people who are turned off to 
performative cruelty but, towards immigrants which, and uh, which, trans kids. Which importantly was the opposite of what Joe Biden did in 2020, right? He didn't run to the Democratic base. He ran yeah. effectively away from the Democratic base. That's right. And he had a strong enough coalition of basically African-American voters and moderate women, white voters black women. Right, black who women. looked at him as the big as the likeliest to win yep. and got behind him and showed up and voted and did the activism at the same time that Biden was tending toward the middle. Mm -hmm. right. At the same time, he was rejecting some of the very things that these constituency groups were calling for. And I think that's a big piece of why he won the general election. Wisely, election. yes. Saying, no, saying, I don't believe in defunding the police all the time. That was a gift to Joe Biden, defund the police, because he got to ignore but, it every time. But I would say the Republicans are running for the base because what they believe in is not wildly popular. Correct. Right. Cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare, those are not popular things. So instead, they run on this, you know, on the one thing that they sort of think the base gets excited about, which are these atrocious, you know, targeting vulnerable people. Yeah. Issues. I think when you look at the Social Security in particular, um, yeah. and you look at Trump, he's a, the one out there saying defend Medicare and Social Security. If you go back, remember George W. Bush tried to do those private accounts with yep. Social Security? Oh, right. The people that stopped him were the base of the Republican Party. Right. It was Southern folks whose parents and grandparents right. were New Dealers. Who said, you know, hands off my social security? And I think Trump has played that extremely well. Trump's so far. budget did cut social security, and Medicare, though. His, but the budget he put forth, it did do that. Correct, yeah. correct. But his rhetoric on it has been good. Good it's, it's the only him. ideological difference he's staked out between himself and DeSantis. Here's so the now. thing that's mystified me the most, though, about the Republicans playing to the base. There's not enough of them right. to win. But then what, what they're doing is trying to shut them. down <laughs> all of the other That's right. They voters. don't need democracy right. to win. I, that I know. I mean, this is why I'll always be in therapy. This, these <laughs> ideas of fairness. <laughs> what does it say about where we are as a country, where we are in politics, that we could potentially have a 2024 election with both candidates being well over the age that most people want to retire mm -hmm. at a time when some of the biggest issues to deal with are around cyber warfare, mm -hmm. AI. Yeah. The environment. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, look, Paul McCartney's 80. Martin <laughs> Scorsese's 80. I'd vote for either of them to be president. Uh, Carol Kane's 81. But I think what Joe Biden has showed me was I don't really fear an older president no, anymore. Right. Maybe he needs to take a nap. Uh, but, you know, all the stuff Joe Biden's done. Right. I mean, the PAC Act, the CHIPS Act, infrastructure. Put a 100-year-old guy in there and see what he can get. A president right. can do a lot when he's not thinking about his mistress or his next job. Ooh. That's what I've learned here. Also, Age is not, oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was just going to say there's a difference between being old and being bright and, right. you That's know, uh, I don't mean even mean to say old. I mean, Joe Biden is... 80 80. He's but, 80. Yeah. And when he stutters, that's not the same as searching for Correct. thoughts and stuff, which he always gets But he's good at slowing down, down and getting the room to yeah. go to his level. Yeah. But yeah. ageism is the one ism that both liberals and conservatives okay. are guilty Molly, of. Okay, Molly, you were hot on it this week. <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to talk about it. You wrote a piece right. that you got a lot of flack for. A saying lot. that <laughs> Diane Feinstein at 89 needs to bow out. Right. She needs to step down. And a lot of people said, that's insensitive. There's Ages. ageism. Sexist. But a lot of people are also forgetting, maybe, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Right. Had Ruth Bader Ginsburg retired, things would potentially be different. We're feeling the ramifications of her not retiring right, right now yes. on a whole lot of issues. 100%. And I also think that this situation with um, DiFi, you know, She's been out. She doesn't have plans to return. This is not the first time that there have been issues and there's been reporting. I mean, since 2016, there's been reporting about this. And I also think, you know, you are a servant of the public. You're supposed to be. You're yeah. supposed. So it's not I mean, it's not about feminism. It's not about ageism. You know, Biden is doing his job just fine. And who cares how old he is? But DiFi is not going to the vote, so they're not able to do the vote. So they have you know, it's going to slow down judicial appointments in a time when we are in a judicial crisis. Yeah. Can I push back on that a little bit? Yes. Because I, I share your concerns, but when it comes to the Judicial Committee, this president's already had more judges approved than Trump or Obama. Um, more than half of them people of color, more than half of them women. Right. He's appointed more black women to the circuit courts than every other president in history combined. Yeah, but, they but why stop but now? If, but yeah. if, because if Feinstein were to re resign right now, what makes you think the Republicans wouldn't filibuster adding another Democrat to the committee? I don't know that if it would achieve well, anything. Well, Feinstein's plan right now is to sub out someone else. But they're not going to let her they're do not, it. Of course they're not going to so let her do it. So if she resigned, it would be the same position. If they're going to if she's, re at least they can do the votes. And even if they, I mean, I, first of all, I think they have a much better leg to stand on. And the other thing is she has no plan to come back. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, if she had a plan to come back. She just doesn't care. <laughs> Nancy, should there be age limits in Congress? There are in lots of private industries. In some ways, I think so, but I, I, I'm of two minds. If you can do the job and if you can really, truly represent right. your yeah. constituents, I don't think it's an issue. But Feinstein is, is not well. well. He's not there. He's well. not. What are the politics of this, John? So, number one, we just say an age limit. The other side of this is an age limit is anti-democratic. If the people of the state right. want right. to elect agree. somebody right. who's 80 years old to the presidency or 85 years old. They want to elect an indicted criminal. Right. Right. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. going to try. Yeah. But, I mean, here are the politics of it. If, uh, if the Senate wasn't divided 50-50, and it wasn't deeply polarized, nobody would care. We've got right. decades and decades and decades mm. of senators wandering, right. around, literally <laughs> wandering Strom around Thurman. the Strom Thurman. Strom Thurman. Strom Thurman. 100 years old. He's still yeah. there, I, mean, I think, Strom Thurman. I mean, and, His ghost is. I mean, you know, if you have a cogent yeah. conversation with uh, a United States senator, it's a good day. I mean, right. no, I'm just kidding. That's yeah, not fair. That's but, very mean. But, very, but frequently over the course of decades, hundreds of years, you've had it's people true. who are basically incapable of doing the job of the Senate, right. which either means it's not that hard to do the job of a senator, uh, they or, or they are willing to do uh, what they have to do to stay in power. But, John, and they, they tend came to do for that. votes. They came in. They were in the office for the votes. I mean, t look, yeah. Ted, Ted Kennedy was injured in a plane accident, and I think missed like a year and a half out of the Senate, which I is mean, certainly Fetterman longer than... I both returned this week. After I, right, out. I know. So, right. You know, right. they have the argument Each that it's... situation is different, but, but you're right. people are angry about this because it's a 50-50 situation. But it doesn't true. matter so much. Do yes. you think Weekend at Bernie's was based on Capitol Hill? <laughs> 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 That's based on... It would, have been, it, would have been, it would have been session at Bernie's. It would have been a lot longer than that. He does look a little like Chuck Grassley. Sorry, did oh, I say that? Okay, our Friday nightcap sticking around.